about you? Mwah. I'm really well. How are you? I'm great, thanks. What are you doing here? Well, I, I, I was going to go for a drink. W- what are you doing? Uh, just in town, really. Well, do you want to join me? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, I'd love on. to. Um, can I have a pint of No, seven? he won't. He's underage. He'll have a Coke. Fine. And I'll have a vodka and orange, please. That was close, Will, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Zara. That's all right. No problem. Appreciate that. Nice to see you. Best not to jeopardise the licence of the, the pub, really. Yeah, it's best not to. Best not to. <laughs> Relax, anyway. Alcohol's not really that good for you. No, I know. I've been doing about it in psychology, actually. Oh, have you? <laughs> thank you. That was good. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It's all right, Will. I'll okay, get you do whatever you do, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, sorry. There's your Coke. That's brilliant. Thank you. Let's sit over here. Good vodka and orange. I bet you can't. Something wrong, Will? <laughs> uh, do you know about Korsakoff syndrome? It's a type of amnesia that's caused by damage to the brain due to excessive or long-term alcohol consumption. A bit like what you're doing now, actually. Pe- people with this disorder, they have an unimpaired recency effect and have a poor long-term memory. Just shows the difference, really, between long and short-term memories. Yeah. Enjoying that, are you? Oh, Will. Of course, I've heard of Korsakoff syndrome. As you said, it's excessive drinking. This is just a vodka and orange. Look, Korsakoff syndrome is when there's damage to an area of the brain called the basal forebrain. Look. This part of the brain produces a chemical that makes the hippocampus and the thalamus more alert and receptive to inflammation. I know that um, Alzheimer's disease, Mm. Newberry and CJD, Down syndrome and repeated blows to the head all can damage that part of the brain. (laughs) You are such a know-it-all. I bet you didn't know there are other types of amnesia. For example, um, uh, retrograde amnesia, where people can't remember anything that happened to them before the event that caused the amnesia. But they can remember things after the event. Mm -hmm. And anti-retrograde amnesia, where people can't form um, new memories, but they can remember things that happened to them before the accident. (laughs) Elderly people. Elderly people have very poor short-term memories, but they can recall events in their past. Kind of shows the difference between long and short-term memories. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good, but do you know about the weakness of the multi-store model? No, no, I thought not. Look, the big weakness with the multi-store model is that a lot of the information that passes into our long-term memories isn't actively rehearsed. Also, you need to consider other factors when you're looking at memory, such as emotions and state of mind. These can influence whether or not a memory is stored. Uh, Anyway, the multi-store model is oversimplified. It doesn't tell us anything about the nature of memory, how or where in the brain memories are stored. Oh, anyway, Will. I've got to go. I'm meeting my boyfriend outside the old mill in 20 minutes. Listen, it was good to see you. Yeah? Yeah, great, great. I'll see, see you, you soon. Take care. See ya. Well, that was a bit disappointing. 
got turned down for a pint, and then got blown out by Zara. Well, I guess we better go back over to Jess. I wonder if she's going out.